I truly am honored that we have reached this day. Um, a true testament of will for many of the ladies in this room I know in particular, but for all of us, all of this community. So we will be, I will be presiding over today's ceremony and welcoming each of you to the Busby Street Complex. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say it up front because I remember us being here um, over the summer and we said we we're gonna be on time and on budget and we have done that. So we are proud of that fact. We are so thankful that so many of you who have been with us every step of the way of this venture, um, have, we've made it to this point because this is a huge resource, a very important resource for this community. The Busby Street Resource and Training Complex is comprised of two buildings. The one that we are sitting in today, the Busby Street Community Center, and also our Columbia Police Department's Office of Community Services. You will also be able to see today, hopefully through the tours at the end, a walking trail and a playground um, for use of our community. Before we begin today's ceremony, I'd like to recognize a few people who, are, who have been so instrumental to this project. First and foremost, Congressman Jim Clyburn. Congressman, would you please stand? Mayor Steve Benjamin and members of City Council, please stand. They're always so supportive of everything you're trying to do. And we will have other members of Council joining us as well. The Columbia Empowerment Zone, Inc. Board of Directors, please stand. Please stand. This board is chaired by Judge Mildred Weathers McDuffie and Mr. Russell McCoy, who's here with us today, serves as the vice chairman. Felicia Maloney, executive director of the Columbia Empowerment Zone, unfortunately could not be with us today, but as most of you know, Felicia has been a huge, huge part of this project from its first thought, um, but Felicia had some previous, previously scheduled travel due to Thanksgiving that took her out of state. Members of the Columbia Empowerment Zone Busby Street Committee, would you please stand? And I think you know who you are. This committee was formed many years ago and has um, you know, remained a big um, source of guidance for us as, as we have moved through the project. If you were a part of that committee, please stand. And I don't know if they formally know that they were known as the Busby Street Committee. <laughs> Because I'm looking at many of them who are in here that are on that plaque out there that are the Busby Street Committee. But nevertheless, thank you so very much. City of Columbia staff, and, and they're all, most of them standing anyway, but I always have to recognize our wonderful staff. Um, Missy Gentry, who's our assistant city manager, who's helped lead, uh, lead uh, many members of that team, but our Columbia Parks and Recreation Department, Police Department, Engineering Department, Public Works Department. Uh, forestry and Beautification, Public and Media Relations, Columbia Water. All of these um, staff members have truly put their heart and soul into this project. Also, um, any other elected officials or appointed officials here with us today? Please stand and be recognized if you are, as well as neighborhood presidents. And I know there's some neighborhood presidents. Please stand, please stand. And we thank you so very much. Thanks to all of you for being here today on what I really, really will call a very momentous occasion. I want to thank the mayor, Mayor Benjamin, and the city council for uh, uh, continuing this vision. But I think I would be a bit remiss if it, I did not give credit to two people uh, for getting us to where we are today. One is Henry Hopkins. Where is Henry? Henry is something right here somewhere. Henry, stand up. I used to call him my nemesis. Uh, every time I saw Henry, he was always beating up on me about some vision he had that I wasn't moving fast enough on. <laughs> Uh, but I want to thank him for his friendship and thank him for sticking with us. And the second person was the former mayor, Mayor Bob, Bob Coble. 
And I'm going to tell you a little story about um, why I mentioned him today. Some of you may not know, but that when this Sumter Columbia Empowerment Zone got started, uh, it was the second effort. Uh, the first time, Columbia put together a magnificent proposal. And Mayor Bob felt that it should get funded, and I did as well. And it didn't get funded. And we looked at it, and we looked behind it. It did not get funded for one reason and only, the politics were against us. So I went to Mayor Bob and I said to him, I said, now look, I have looked into this. I know exactly why we missed it. I want you to apply again. And he was absolutely adamant in saying no. He said, we put in too much effort. We had a good proposal. And we lost that proposal. I'm not going to take city council in this community down that road again. And I said to him, I said, here's what I want you to do. Make it a recent proposal. That will show a significant change. And um, someone came to me and says, uh, they thought Columbia and Orangeburg would be a great fit. And I said, yeah, that is true. But there's one little problem with that. And they said, what's that? I live in Columbia, and I was born in Sumter. <laughs> and I think Sumter, Columbia would be a much better fit. <laughs> so we made the, submitted the proposal, and I went to work using the relationships I had developed over the years. And we got it funded. Now, the concept of an empowerment zone is to bring diverse community groups together around the same table and seek common ground. We're not born uh, into unity. We develop experiences along the way that make us all uniquely different. And we will grow as a community when we can bring all those experiences into the same room around the same table, giving honor and respect to everybody's life experiences, and trying to find ways to bring those experiences uh, into a viable effort on the part of the communities within which we all live. I live on Juniper Street out here in uh, Greenview. Um, those of you who may live here around Busby Street, you, you're developing some relationships and you have some experiences that I don't get on Easter Street or, or Juniper Street. But when we can come together and I can share my experiences, you share yours, we can get things done. That was the concept of the empowerment zones. And we were to get it funded, authorized for 10 years at $10 million a year for 10 years. And then at the expiration, then the communities were supposed to spin off on their own. My hometown didn't. My adopted hometown did. You stayed together. And I can tell you, this project is one of the best experiences of what an empowerment zone is supposed to be about. And you ought to be congratulated for it. And I thank you for it. And I, I want to say, in closing, I, uh, all three of my daughters are here. Uh, they spend a little time when the three of us get together telling me how to conduct myself. And we spent some time on that last night. Uh, and as you all know, that this was a pretty uh, contentious election season. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to heal. And things will be all right. But 
I asked Mignon, and, and some of you know this, Mignon just finished about nine years on the Federal Communications Commission. And one of the things she did while on that commission, because of her own experiences, she became the interim chair of that commission, be, becoming the first woman, first African-American woman to ever hold that position in the history of the country. And there was one, two things she had on her mind. One was something she called inmate calling. That is the exorbitant prices that penal institutions were charging uh, children and adults to stay in touch with their families. $17 a minute for a phone call. And she set out to stop that. And she did. But the other thing was, 9-11 was so calamitous because of interoperability. One group of first responders could not uh, communicate with another group. And they were working at cross purposes, bringing our first responders into this building, into this community, and getting interoperability to work means a safer community for us, means a more viable and more valuable community for us. I can't tell you how proud I am of this project. And we had the ground break another day for the senior uh, citizens facility. I turned to Emily and I said, Emily, let's check this thing out. <laughs> <laughs> This might be our residence in a few years. <laughs> and so Sumter, Columbia, now Columbia Empowerment Zone, thank you all so much about thinking about my future as well. <laughs> Congratulations to Godspeed. We're not done yet. We're going to get out of number one, two, or three, right? One, two, in that order, in that order. We are so blessed uh, to have Jim Clyburn representing the Mighty Six Congressional District of South Carolina. And um, we're excited about the possibility. Always a place for you at the new senior facility, my friend, but too soon, too soon. We, uh, we got a lot of work to do between now and then. Um, I'm excited, and I'm gonna be brief. We have a, a, a long program, and I, I really want you to hear from the other folks on the, on the program. My, honestly, my only intention here is just to say thank you to a whole lot of folks, a whole lot of folks. Uh, each and every one of you that ex exhibited not just the leadership, but also the patience uh, that it took to get from day one to this day, uh, the wonderful residents who make up this great community, uh, who have had to deal with some challenges over the years, but stuck it through and showed the leadership to actually get us here. Some of whom have gone on to glory, Rev Reverend Holmes, um, Mrs. Belfield, um, former city councilwoman Leona Plow, who I think had been involved in this in a number of different iterations, from staff all the way through council, and now she's gone on uh, to glory as well. Uh, Ms. Harris, I want to thank you and all of our neighborhood leaders uh, for uh, the incredible uh, intestinal fortitude that you have shown um, in making sure that we have a place in this city for people of all ages to enjoy, uh, rep recognizing uh, that all of us stand on the great, strong shoulders of men and women who have built this city to give us the opportunities to continue to serve and um, having a place for our seniors to gather, to continue to learn, engage in lifelong learning and, and fellowship is something very, very special. Uh, to the leaders of our Columbia Empowerment Zone, uh, of, of our North Columbia Business Association, the Eau Claire Community Council, I mean, those of you who, who work every single day to, to fortify the fabric of, of this great city, I wanna thank you all for sticking uh, this out with the members of Columbia City Council and our incredible staff in delivering uh, this high quality project. Uh, to um, Teresa, uh, you and your incredible team, uh, we got this done. Felicia, I know is not here with us. Uh, she and um, uh, Judge McDuffie and the incredible team at the Columbia Empowerment Zone. Uh, Congressman Clyburn referenced it. I want to say we might be one of only a handful of empowerment zones, um, um, less than a handful of empowerment zones around the country who've carried on the banner and continu continued to deliver project after quality project uh, for the benefit of, of this community. It's good when the vision uh, becomes reality and continues to give uh, back to the people who made it possible in the very first place. And I want to um, uh, wrap things up by just saying thank you to um, um, a 
very personal thank you to my friend Sam Davis, uh, to Councilwoman Tamika Isaac Devine, and, and to the, the, the rookie, uh, uh, Reverend McDowell, uh, who hit the ground running. You know, there's, there's a running joke on city council that, that the Fowler Road is split between Districts 1 and District 2, and they always fight over who, who, uh, who, get, who gets what resources uh, come in, and, uh, and I'm, not sure, I'm not sure who's winning right now. You got Hyatt Park on the agenda tonight, getting some resources. You got Greenview Park, uh, a fantastic facility over on, on Beltline uh, Boulevard. If you have not had a chance to see this award-winning LEED certified building um, that used to be a rundown car dealership is now a, a, a classic LEED gold certified building on Beltline Boulevard. You see the, uh, the constant leadership of, 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 of these three uh, city council people in particular the, who, who made sure that this remained at the top of the agenda and, and finally got done. So I want to thank you all for your, for your leadership and your, your friendship. Uh, this is what happens when the community comes together, when you never ever take your eyes off the ball and just keep on driving towards, towards a goal. Uh, Congressman, again, thank you. I will tell you all, it, it seemed to be a, a, a side comment, a flipping comment. There's still a real possibility that the very first African-American Speaker of the House of Representatives can come from Sumter, South Carolina, <laughs> Columbia, South Carolina, the way station in Charleston and Orangeburg along, along, along the way. We are indeed blessed to have Jim Clyburn uh, in leadership in Washington, D.C., and it continues uh, to uh, inure to the benefit of the people of, of this community. And this is another example of just that. Thank you all uh, for all your work. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your prayers. We're going to keep on doing great things together. God bless you. I don't have any, I don't have any written words. Um, but I can tell you that everything you've heard so far is the truth, is accurate, and it's based on experience and cooperation. For those of you who have never been on this street, Busby, if you were here before we broke ground, you would know what was here, dilapidated houses, um, and a little bit of activities that uh, most community would not prefer. But the vision, and Jim is accurate. He's very accurate about the nemesis, Mr. Hopkins, <laughs> who took on the plight of this neighborhood, walking side by side, and never letting us forget what our responsibilities were. And that is to provide quality services, quality facilities for the people who live in this area and for the city who will benefit from this facility. Um, and it, it was not easy in the beginning, but the empowerment zone lived up to its promise. And this is an example of that. North Main, what's coming now is an example of that. And there were some push and pulls along the way. I won't go into details, um, Dalton, but he can tell you there was a period, one morning, when Jim Clyburn thought I'd lost my mind. <laughs> but it was all about making this a reality. And we want to make sure that this sets an example of what we ought to be doing. And it's an example of listening, listening to the people who support you and the people who you've made promises to. There are some ladies in this room, I tell you. <laughs> you don't ever want to get on the bad side of them. <laughs> they never forget. They know what they want. They know what they deserve, and they know how to help you and make you get it done. I appreciate the residents of Burton Standish Acres. Although everybody's going to benefit, they were part of this vision. And we're going to make sure that they rest and they sleep at night, that they have that sense of security that they've always 
demanded that we give them, provide for them, and they're going to enjoy this facility. Um, I don't know about volleyball, <laughs> but it's a pleasure to be able to walk less than a block, to walk down a walking trail, to exercise, and have a meeting. Believe it or not, these ladies left their neighborhood, leave their neighborhood for their monthly meeting. It shouldn't happen. It's not going to happen again. So this is a special occasion, but at the same time, um, I want to thank, uh, I'm calling you Jim. We, we, we've been together since high school. He's a man of his word. He's always had this community and this state in, in mind, and everything that we've been accomplishing and everything that we've given ourselves praise for is a result of his efforts. And um, I told Andrina two days ago that uh, you're going to be all right. <laughs> we know that. And uh, you've got some folks in this room who will travel to Washington. Thank you. I certainly do not want to go over what has already been said, but what I do want to say, as we move into this amazing facility, this journey started in 2001 when a grant was given to the Empowerment Zone through the Eau Claire Community Development to do exactly what we've done here today. What is amazing about this project, of course, there is a theological motif that embeds itself in this project. As you know, this was a dead-end street, a dead-end street with various numerous issues, particularly it allowed us to not only visibly see those issues, but to just visualize that dead end street. I've had conversations with Ms. Harrison and others who immediately would say, what about this property? It's coming. Guess what? That dead end street now has become possi possibilities that enwraps itself in hope, in promises. It involves not only a dead-end street, but guess what? Resurrection always comes after a dead, something is dead. Somebody ought to say amen. <laughs> Now, as I understand the theological motifs attached to that, it took three days. It took us a little longer for resurrection to take place. <laughs> but guess what? It's up. It's running. New possibilities, hope, promise, protection, grass being cut new possibilities, resurrection. So I thank the other members of this council, our mayor and of course our congressman for allowing us to sense resurrection. Thank you. I'm excited to be here as we begin to cut the ribbon for a brand new facility that will, that will be a valuable asset to the community. As you will see after the ribbon cutting program, the building is comprised of three offices, a multi-purpose room, which we're now in, a kitchen and a conference room. The space that you're sitting in currently can be divided into three sections and, and it's equipped with state-of-the-art audiovisual equipment. We look forward to providing a rich environment of learning and community engagement, as well as programs that benefit the mind and body. We have several events and programs planned for the community, including um, financial workshops, ask a professional sessions, 
and exercise classes, to just name a few. It is my hope that the facility will help break down barriers and help generations to come achieve success through services that will be provided. Thank you. And at this time, I also want to acknowledge some of the um, um, uh, people that helped build this, this facility, Deb and Josh from McGuire and Snow Architecture Design Group. If you could raise your hand. Stand out. OK, Deb and Josh. Also, we have um, Harry from Clay Clayton Construction. Again, thank you. Our staff is, is a, tremendously excited about you know, this community and what we can do to make a difference. Thank you. It's an exciting day. Um, very happy to be here um, on behalf of the police department. Um, I bring you greetings. It's been a long time coming. Um, I, I can remember vividly um, a little over a year ago, Miss Wilson with that pleasant demeanor she has and that um, beautiful smile. Um, you all, that's what you all see, but um, <laughs> I can remember her gathering the, the staff um, and saying, we are going to get this done. We're going to get it done on time and it's going to meet, meet budget. Um, and she was all business and um, she, um, at times she gets pushed to that point and when she lays the law down, um, she means business and that was exactly my takeaway from the meeting and, and we proceeded, proceeded forward. The police department has always been, historically been very active in pursuing community partnerships and outreach opportunities in, in, in support of our community policing operations. If you think back to the mid-90s under Chief Austin's leadership when the department partnered with the Columbia Urban League on a grant to implement the COBAN model, which was a Japanese concept of putting many police stations in the, in the communities as well as some residential housing opportunities for officers working in the communities. Uh, then you go to the late 90s and think of the Eau Claire revitalization effort when CPD moved into the, moved its North Region headquarters into the Eau Claire Town Hall building and co-mingled it for the first time with other city services. It put city services and the police department in the heart of the North Region service area. And then, if you think back over 10 years ago, and some may even argue longer, the city began annexing some properties in and around Busby Street where we stand today. And at that time, the police department and the Columbia Empowerment Zone began collaborating on a vision to create a facility for the community and for the police, a vision of bringing police community services into the community we serve. And that vision is what brings us here today and it's what is reality today. Today we introduced the Columbia Police Office of Community Services. This office will house staff of our ACE program, which is our assisting Columbia's elderly, our school resource officer program, and our citizen police academy. It's the first time we'll be co-mingled with park and recreation. And I think that will absolutely lead to a terrific opportunity for us to collaborate with parks, to bring community events and strengthen relationships that make communities safer. This facility will bring vibrancy to this area. And Ms. Harrison, um, I know that we will have many opportunities to collaborate on ways to continue to strengthen this community um, and make it safer for everyone. Congressman Clyburn, thank you for fighting the fight. Um, we're, we're better today than we were yesterday, and there is a tremendously bright future for Burton Heights and Standish Acres and for what this facility brings us. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Common Empowerment Zone Board, our chairperson, Judge Mildred Weathers McDuffie, uh, I want to say how happy we are to be here today for this ribbon cutting. Uh, this is truly a, an honor for us to be associated with this today. Uh, as I was walking in, this lady right here, how it came in behind you, and I heard you saying to, to the lady walking next to you that you've been waiting for 20 years for this. <laughs> and you've been in this neighborhood 55 years. I heard you say that. And that's what this is all about for us. That's what this really means for us with the Empowerment Zone. Uh, yes, we did start in 2001, 
Uh, it's been a long road. Uh, Sam, Henry, Edna, you all know, Tamika, uh, Congressman, this is in large part due to your help. We certainly thank you. Uh, our goal was very simple. We wanted to, to uh, improve the lives of, of, of our residents, pure and simple. That's what, we, what, what our goal is with the Empowerment Zone, and we have uh, stayed true to that, and this is, this is a monument to that. So uh, I certainly want to thank Congressman, Mayor, all the council, Sam, Tamika, Ed, uh, Henry, 17 years, Edna, uh, and for all of you folks who will, who will enjoy this and uh, benefit from it, uh, we're, just, we're just very, very happy for you. So happy Thanksgiving, everyone. All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercies endureth forever. First of all, there are a lot of people that I would like to say thank you to. All right, Congressman Clyburn, Mayor Benjamin, my friend Sam Davis, and Councilman McDowell, and I don't want to forget McKee. Um, all right, give me your name again. Tamika, okay. When you get my age, sometimes uh, things come out differently from the head and the mouth, but I mean well. Okay, now, first of all, I want to give thanks to God, especially, and I want to give thanks to all those who I've mentioned, uh, Mr. Hopkins and some others. But first of all, I would also like to give thanks to those people who have allowed our neighborhood to continue in that we've had some entities that provided a space for us over the years. I'd like to thank the Greater St. Luke Baptist Church, Antioch Baptist Church. I would like to thank the Eau Claire Community Council. I can go on and on because we have used all those facilities to continue to provide a safe and viable neighborhood for us. Uh, will the Burton Heights Stanley Acres neighborhood members please stand up? Because you have been my backbone and you have supported us. And I would like to thank you. <laughs> City manager and all the staff, we want to thank you. But we are not finished yet, okay? Uh, I, I, I prayed about this on last night, about what to say and how to say it. And first of all, we have some things that need to be done in this area. First of all, you need to remember that when you come off of I-77 and you make a right, you hit right into Fair Road. When you come off I-20, you come right on to Fair Road. There are some things that need to be done on Fair Road. We need revitalization in our area. I'm not going to go on and on because I can, but I would like to say, <laughs> But I would like to say thank you and thank you because I met with the um, Burton Heights Standish Acres um, neighborhood. A part of us met with the staff from Parks and Recreation and we sat down and laid out some things that we would like to have done in our neighborhood. And we are looking forward to having some of those things done. It is a pleasure to be a part of Burton Heights, Stanley Shakers neighborhood. And as I said, I could go on, but I'm gonna take my seat. Thank you. All right. And, and last but not least, we would like to thank all of you for what you've done for us. And we wish you a very happy and loving and Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you.